Beth, hello and welcome to the Future is Freelance. It's brilliant to have you with us. Maya, I'm so excited to be here. I have quoted you a gazillion times since I found your podcast a few months ago. Well, so I'm it's so exciting. I'm grateful. To... You know, it's, it's so lovely. <laughs> I really appreciate you doing that. And as a fellow podcaster, you know just how much that means when somebody <laughs> recognizes what you're doing and calls it out publicly. So I'm, I really appreciate that. And I want people to know about what you do as well. So before we talk about podcasting, which is our favorite subject, mutually, I'm sure, <laughs> um, tell us a little bit more about Steph and how you ended up with the unique business offering that you presently have. <laughs> um, mostly by accident and then intentionally is my <laughs> answer to pretty much everything that has to do with podcasting. Um, I was a, an independent podcaster for about three years and then just before the pan or just as the pandemic was hitting and everybody was deciding they wanted a podcast to um, to fill that kind of connection mm -hmm. area in their business that they couldn't do in person. A uh, few people who had followed my podcast or knew I did podcasting um, reached out to me and said, hey, can you help me with mine? I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I accidentally started to do editing for them. And that kind of grew into doing not just the editing, but some kind of bespoke organic outreach for clients, some show notes, you know, pretty much whatever a client needed that I had done, experimented with myself, I was mm -hmm. willing to offer to do for them because I love experiments. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing that for about three years now and um, and it's growing and changing and and there's a lot of stuff that I've done recently and I've, I've ironically uh, like narrowed down to the solopreneur space recently mm -hmm. and it feels so comfy. These are my people. These are our people. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. No, it's a lovely group of people. It's a lovely mm -hmm. audience to be working with. And yeah. I guess that solopreneurs have a particular need or range of needs that maybe the big, the corporate clients don't have. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if, I mean, we all talk as solopreneurs and freelancers about our content marketing strategy and our body of work that we put out there. But I don't know if people always think of podcasting in that context. I mean, mm -hmm. do, do we, should we? Who who isn't podcasting that ought to be? Oh yeah, I'm honestly anybody who has a marketing plan that's not working for them. Anybody who has a marketing plan that is working, but they want to do something different. So pretty much, I, I would say anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it probably depends on the business to some degree, but when you're talking about solopreneurs who are really looking for that that kind of not just someone who needs your service, but somebody who's a good personality fit, a good energetic fit, mm. then I think when you look at podcasting and the voice, even when it's video podcasting, it's still, it's still voice driven. And our vo our personalities are in our voices, our energy, our, our, how we are as a person is in our voice. And so there's a beautiful intimacy that happens that people have been writing about for years in mm -hmm. podcasting. And that really serves the solopreneur well, because when you use a podcast for your marketing or as part of more, more likely as part of your marketing for your solopreneur venture, what you're doing is you're changing your discovery calls from, will I work with you to how will I work with you? Right. It, yeah. it just gets you there to that connection point quicker. That's so interesting. And you're absolutely right. I went to an event last month in a country I'd never been to before and met people who said, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know your voice and, you know, you've, you've come to life in, in front of me. <laughs> but it, and it's weird that it's, it's also it's so unidirectional because mm -hmm. I didn't know them. I mean, it was great getting to know them, but it, was, it did make me aware of this kind of hyper intimacy that you have. Mm -hmm whispering into people's ears once a week or once a fortnight that that we might not always be aware of and as freelancers as solopreneurs we are our brand mm -hmm. yes so it, it makes complete sense that that we should bring it to life in that way and I don't know if there's something about the sweet spot of audio that video video is great but it can almost be a bit performative that mm -hmm. I know that I'm definitely less comfortable doing video than audio only so that if I am speaking in a webinar or a training course or something like that, then I, it's mm -hmm. not as me quite so much. Ah, well, that, that depends on the person. Some people yes. are definitely like that. And there is, there is more pressure to not look weird or be weird on video. <laughs> and we do weird things when we speak. Um, <laughs> so, 
And <laughs> I know this because I've, I've been editing my audio for years and I would go back and do quality control and try to take stuff out. And I'd be like, I never knew I made that face. I never knew I tilted my head. What am I doing exactly in this part? But I'm saying something that I can't take out. And this is, this is awful. But honestly, I don't think people judge us nearly as much as we judge ourselves, mm -hmm. but it is something to seriously get used to. And for some people, you don't need to. You can just do audio if you feel comfortable with that. Yes. I've definitely had guests who didn't want to do video mm -hmm. at all, even for just yeah. capturing some social. But that's absolutely fine. I do think hopefully that's maybe one positive legacy of the pandemic years that we've mm -hmm. all gotten over ourselves on webcam to a much greater extent <laughs> now after yeah. those Zooms that people had to have for the first time. I've <laughs> uh, <laughs> hopefully... You know, we, we've just, we've got better at not looking at ourselves or not getting so hung up on how weird we look, especially when we're flipped or we're more, we're not flipped. We're used to seeing ourselves yeah. in the mirror image and then we see ourselves on the screen and it's odd. Um, but talking hopefully is something we can all do. And the barrier to entry <laughs> is so low. I mean, yeah. obviously people can hire somebody like you to make it sound polished and perfect, but you don't even have to start there, do you? You can mm -hmm. literally pick up a free app and a cheap mic and just get going. So if we can persuade freelancers that they should, that this should be part of their matrix of content creation, mm -hmm. then what's the end goal here? Because you can monetize a podcast and get sponsors mm -hmm. and make loads of money off it. But do you think for most freelancers that's realistic or yeah. should they be thinking more about the branding? I, I'd say it's more about the branding and and about bringing in the right clients and mm -hmm. about making the right connections with other people doing the same thing. I think those are the most, not just lucrative financially, although that is nice as a freelancer with the mm -hmm. ebb and flow of, uh, of all of that, <laughs> oh, yeah. but it's, it's, it's making those, those longer term connections and, and, um, in that, in that more intimate way that we're talking about, which is way more impactful than anything you can do. I mean, you can, you can try to monetize and get ads on there, get affiliate links, do your, whatchamacallit, Amazon affiliates and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. You can do all of affiliate stuff and, and different kinds of monetization things. But honestly, the most powerful thing you can do is sell yourself, your services, your products. If you have any passive income products, that's super powerful to put in your own in your yes. own podcasts. Yeah. So that's a third route then apart from simply mm -hmm. building your authority is if you mm -hmm. offer productized services or yes. even simply marketing yourself by the hour for the services that you can offer mm -hmm. podcasting, such a powerful way of building that reputation, that expertise yes. and going really deep. I mean, I really love the conversations that we have in podcasting mm -hmm. where we, we, the intersection of your audience and what they're interested in and what that person's bringing mm -hmm. is something so narrow that you plumb these fascinating depths. And I mean, I think a question that a lot of people might have for you, Steph, is about the, the kind of technology and what mm -hmm. you need to get started. Do you have to master lots of software? Is it difficult? Is it within the scope of the average freelancer? Oh, massively within, because to be quite honest, and I'm sure some people would roll their eyes at me for saying this, but if you really only had your cell phone, mm -hmm. you could, with some training, <laughs> a little bit of training or practice, you could actually get some really good sounding stuff out of most cell phones these days, especially if you have an iPhone, but you can even use an, I use Android sometimes just to do like mini episodes or announcements that I put in my pre-roll or things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But you can definitely, again, with a little tip or trick here and there. Oh, can I tell you one trick right now that's really oh, please. cool? please. Yes. Okay. Um, I learned this from Lee of the Asian American Podcast Association. If you, like, here's my cell phone here. I'm just holding it in front of my face. Like, the the mic uh, the mic is just, mm. like, right, right, right here. If you just put a tiny rag over, not, not a tissue because that'll make noise, but, like, a soft cloth over mm. the microphone, and then hold it to your mouth. It'll take care of the popping peas. So you won't have oh, a... Okay. So you make and a pop filter out of a... Exactly. You can do a pop filter <laughs> from on your phone. So you can do that if you need to. But to be quite honest, like the Samsung Q2, like I'm using right now, I don't know what it is now because it was like $40 when I bought it five years ago, I think. Wow. I think it's closer to 70 ish dollars, whatever that translates to in other currencies. And it is a very good mic that you can use in untreated places mm. and it will pick up you your voice it focuses on your voice not the other sounds that are in the room i've had construction outside 
and people can't hear it because it focuses, it only mostly picks wow. up my voice. Yeah. So it's a really good mic. So you don't need a lot of technology to start. Um, you do need a lot of time and you mm. need a lot of patience. And I think you know that. <laughs> yes. Now I'm doing it all myself. <laughs> I've had to learn how long it will take, even with your beautiful clean audio, it will take me time to edit mm -hmm. this episode. Um, and yeah, it's it's good to know that you do feel that you can get good results just with a phone because I would mm -hmm. like to do more event-based mm -hmm. interviews and snippets and recordings. So that's a really worthwhile tip and a, a good mic for, what did, you, what did you say, about 40 or $50? It's about the same in euros now, I think, haven't helped us. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I know, but, yeah. You, you can certainly do an awful lot with that. I used to have a, a Blue Yeti, but it broke. And mm. then I got this thing, which is probably half the price. And I do think it sounds a lot better than the Yeti used to well, pick up everything in the whole neighborhood. That's the thing is that Blue Yetis are condenser microphones and they pick up everything equally. And like the Samsung Q2 that I mentioned is a dynamic microphone and it picks up what's closest to it, which if you're in an untreated mm. room is perfect because you want it to pick up you not ever, all the other yes, sounds indeed we've so got look for a dynamic here at the moment and mm -hmm. we're prone to have brass bands or fireworks going off even <laughs> in my quiet spot in the suburbs it's all people are very oh, excited about i think it's the first the first fiestas with no distancing or restriction um, <laughs> had, so, um for oh, several God. years so it's all a little bit crazy out there at any time <laughs> usually when i reach for a record button <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have friends who off. leave Valencia during this festival because yes. they're like, I can't get any work done at all. <laughs> oh yeah. If you're in the center, no question. Um, yeah. Usually it, it should be quite all right. But you just have to go with the flow, <laughs> don't you? This is part of, part of the yeah. joy of podcasting Absolutely. and freelancing and living in a more location independent way as you absorb those things <laughs> going on around you. And the podcasting carries on. <laughs> We, it does. we simply record and it all happens in, in the context of that wider picture. And obviously podcasting is changing, even though it's been around for a mm -hmm. long time. How long has podcasting been around? You I know think this. a little over 15 years. I wow. Think is the, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that probably tracks actually, because I can remember listening to podcasts years ago, training for mm -hmm. a long walking event and listening to sort of really early mm -hmm. podcasts like Ricky Gervais and people mm -hmm. like that when it was you know, on my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I remember dragging and dropping the files and then yes. <laughs> like getting ready to take it outside and, and walk around and listen to people. And I was like, if you've got so enough exciting. space and you have to wipe the old ones off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like such effort, but it was worth it. <laughs> Definitely. And we had no idea what a trend was setting, but what's happening now in podcasting? Oh. What would you say are the biggest trends or news or things to be excited oh about? Oh my gosh. Well, there's a lot of different parts to podcasting, right? There's the big networks, there's the independent the hobbyist, and then there's the, the, the business folks, which sometimes could be the networks, but sometimes are more like the solopreneurs. So there's, it's starting to, not starting to, but it's, it's solidifying in its camps. <laughs> I guess you could say okay. camps or tribes. And so within each one of those spaces, it, it, different things are happening. In the networks, there was a big boom with advertisements, and now there's a big bust, and there's lots mm. of layoffs and all that, and that's what everybody's reporting on. But that doesn't really affect the smaller hobbyist or solopreneur podcaster so much because we don't have those big million-dollar deals and things. So we're more like looking at YouTube, and we're, um, you know, playing with like a um, what's it called? 3D audio. And like, we're experimenting mm. with content and with format and with sound and doing those kinds of things. So it, it really depends on which side of the podcasting space and what yeah. people want to be doing with it. Yeah. Oh, we're definitely on the, the nimble solopreneur side that we can we respond are. to this stuff. And, you know, this is something that we've talked about a lot on this show, particularly in the light of the big geopolitical factors and economic factors mm -hmm. and things that actually it's a huge advantage to be small and to be able to pivot, to be able to embrace new things mm -hmm. and, and shift the way you do things, often in a quite experimental way, just to to see what works for you and see what's bringing you the results you want. I've heard mm -hmm. a lot about YouTube and podcasting recently, mm -hmm. and I know um, you've been encouraging me to do video, <laughs> do more, <laughs> um, instead of just hiding behind the mic. And so, But what's important about YouTube? I mean, what sort of difference is this going to make, do you think? Well, 
I hesitate to say anything because it's it's changing literally daily now. Right. Like they're um, the latest news is that they're they're going to. It hasn't happened yet, but they're as of last week, uh, beginning of March, they're they've announced that they're going to offer to put podcasts on YouTube music via RSS feed, but it's not happening. Nobody knows how to do it. It doesn't exist. It's not, we can't listen to it yet, Mm. but they say that that's going to happen. But in general, when I'm enthusiastic about YouTube, (laughs) I'm talking about YouTube, YouTube, the place we all go to for the other things, not YouTube music, music, YouTube, but YouTube, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And which is the second biggest search engine in the world. And people have been posting podcasts, both static and motion, on Mm. there for years. And people in offices, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, during the pandemic, have been listening to podcasts on YouTube for years. Listening to. A lot Mm. of people don't watch the videos that are on there, no matter what the video is. Uh, And then there's weirdos like me that actually go, I want to look and see what the host is, what their facial expression is. And I'll go over to the YouTube channel and go to that point and go, oh, okay, I I guess I'll watch the rest of the video now. So there's there's a lot of search, a lot of discoverability over on YouTube. Mm. And there's also this thing called feedback. You have comments right there next to the video, which is just so non-existent in podcasting true you spend all this time begging people to leave you a review so can you Mm -hmm. go and find the app where you listen to the thing and then if you (laughs) click it you might be able to see a link somewhere and i might one day be able to find that if i look in the right country Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah okay it's tricky Mm -hmm. it's tricky so yes there's there's a few different things that are and their analytics are gorgeous absolutely right. gorgeous yeah well it's it's part of google so they've yeah. got access to you have to log in to go on to youtube so they've got your information so they can mm. share that which yes. may be good or bad but it for us it gives us a lot of healthy information definitely about who's watching what else they're watching it's it's kind of beautiful Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's definitely exciting because at the moment the analytics we get through our hosting companies are kind of, it's what they get, isn't it? Which which isn't a a great deal. So do you think, I mean, for those of us who are less on the technical side that we're going to see offered in Buzzsprout, for example, Mm. a button that says, make this go on YouTube. That's been happening in some podcast hosts for years already. Okay. Not mine. Yeah. I don't know if it does on Buzzsprout because I do host there too, uh, because I started a YouTube channel and podcast at the same yeah. time. So I'm used to uploading mine manually. So I just kept doing that. Mm. But I, they might have that. I know Libsyn has it. I think Captivate has it. Like a few uh, of the, okay. the big players do Maybe have that I just already. Need to dig in and and see what's already there. But would that be to post a static image? Yeah, yeah. Whereas you yeah. upload the actual video of your, you know. So that would be my whole weird face and everything. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you know, I didn't really think about it too much because I have both depending mm-hmm. on what the guest is comfortable with um, and so on. And sometimes like for my older episodes, I have a lot more static videos because I didn't save the videos. Huh. Um, but you can do more than just the static image and the motion. You can do like automation. You can do different pictures. Like there's a lot of mm. in-between stuff you can do, okay. which doesn't have yeah. faces, which can be more engaging if people are watching your video. So there's there's right. a lot more. And there's pages of those options and examples you can click on in the podcasting on YouTube guide, which is right. dense. <laughs> <laughs> but informative. Okay. Is that the thing that's 80 pages long? Or, 67, or 67 pages. 67. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did do a webinar on it that is now a paid course that I'd be more than happy to give you the link to. I do like the 10 most valuable things for solopreneurs that simplifies Fantastic. it to a degree, has an index of key terms and all things to try to make it more manageable. Because as much as the information is amazing, it is not organized very well if i'm completely honest (laughs) for a company that's supposed to be the ultimate at indexing everything (laughs) that's a little disappointing i guess but but it's all there yeah i mean i I can see where they're going with it it was there's so much information to put in there i just yeah i I don't blame them at all i'm glad we have you to distill it for us (laughs) (laughs) Because because we're freelancers, right? You know, we're mm-hmm. we're not Joe Rogan. We haven't got teams of people to Mm-mm. sit and 
tease all this out and do all the things for us, we have to prioritize. Yes. And you already said you upload the video and th with the video with the faces and with a, a static thing. Do you set, do you upload them both at the same time or on the same channel or how does that work? Um, well, wait, what? Um, so it, I have different videos depending on what is happening and what the guest is comfortable with. So sometimes right. I'll have emotion, like, like what we're doing here with the, with us talking and doing that. And sometimes if the guest doesn't want to be on there at all, I'll, we'll just shut the cameras down and I'll put a static image in there. Right. Uh, okay. Sometimes when I get really playful, cause I am learning more and more and more about video editing is I'll have, I'll go from like faces to like, I'll put a picture of what we're talking about, like a, like a static image of mm. that thing we're talking about. And, and do that kind of thing. Cool. So it just like depends, but yeah. that takes a lot more time. <laughs> of course, there's so many things now, and there's some interesting AI apps coming mm -hmm. out that pick out your highlights and and transcribe and overlay and do all sorts of sexy things. That yeah. And even though it's automated, it still takes a lot of time because you've got to to check it that does. they're transcribed accurately and that you and know how to use the app. And I want them to get better. Because yeah. I want to use them. I hate making shorter video clips, but I, I experimented with a new one last week and it, it did my call to action in a video. And I'm like, oh no, 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 that's not a clip I really want. Right. Yeah. To put on so, social media. I don't want the call to action without any context. Without the, yes. <laughs> Just gimme, gimme. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, no, that's not, that's not value. That's, uh, that's like you said, mm. gimme. And I'm like, now nah, wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's good to see this going in that direction but yes there's still still room for improvement oh, sure. there and the, i yeah. mean we have to be in podcasting for the long haul don't we we know mm -hmm. that this is not something that you build an audience or you build a brand with overnight and that was something i wanted to ask you about actually particularly mm. from the solopreneur perspective how come what motivation can you give people to keep going with this when you put your episode out there week after week and you mm -hmm. don't see your downloads going up and you're not getting any reviews and you're wondering, is it worth carrying on? You know, what, well, why should I bother? Those things don't really matter to solopreneurs. What matters are the connections. Right. Again, connections to peers and connections to potential clients. Mm -hmm. And those, I mean, if you're sharing your, your episodes in, if you're sharing the value that's in the episodes in spaces where people will start to listen to it, those connections will come pretty quickly. Because okay. like attracts like, and people that need the things that you're talking about will start to listen and they'll start to reach out to you, whether it be to be your client or just to say that was amazing or I, you know, they, they'll recommend you to someone else. Those connections come pretty quick. I don't want to say quick in the normal sense. I want to say within the first six months, probably mm -hmm. those, assuming that you're promoting it or sharing the value in it, those will come pretty quickly. And once that starts happening, for me, the connections fed everything else. Mm. Like I was motivated to share my story. And then I kind of, then I started making the connections and the connections kept me going. Like I yes. ran out of story. <laughs> right. Like, I'm done sharing, uh, uh -huh. but, but, but now I can share your stuff too. Okay. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> and we bring different people into the story and yeah. they bring new layers to it, new, new aspects and so on. So yeah, I completely yeah. agree with that. And for somebody who's maybe new to this, they might be wondering, we talked about the time it takes to edit mm -hmm. and do a nice job, but mm -hmm. what sort of time investment do you think you need to be spending on the sharing and the promoting and the engaging as well? Because yeah. you do, you read somewhere, some places will say, if you're new, just make episodes, just, you know, don't worry too much about promoting till you've got loads of episodes to refer mm -hmm. people to. But then if you've got all this content and it's, going stale and it's nobody knows about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. how, how do you overcome that? What do you think the balance should be? There's, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like last November I did on my newest podcast, Solopreneur Podcasting Tips, I did 30 episodes in 30 days for National Podcast Post Month. And wow. that was a really fun way to get started on that podcast. And I got so many ideas on where it would go during those mm -hmm. 30 days that I'm still digging into because you can't activate any of them during that rapid turnaround. And some people do seven day challenges. Some people like to have 10 episodes out before they do a lot of promotions. It really mm -hmm. depends on your podcast, why, um, and what you're comfortable with. Uh, what I would encourage people to, to do is 
don't record 10 and then get rid of eight because you don't like how they sound because no matter <laughs> where you start, the, the beginning ones will always be worse. You'll always get better. Never so just listen to them again. Oh. Post. Yeah. <laughs> and if anything, go back like a few months or a year uh, into your podcast and and encourage people to listen and go, look at this. Look at how much better I've gotten at all of this. <laughs> um, sorry, I've diverted. Um, so time how much you should promote. I heard people say when I first started podcasting that you spent 20% creatively, 80% marketing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, that's crazy. And now I get it. They're right. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, it doesn't matter how good your content is or how good it sounds. If it doesn't actually get in front of people, they have to be exposed to it for it yeah. to take off, for the word of mouth to start going and for people to start going, that's amazing. I want more of that. So I would say at least half when you're starting, half Correct. your time creating, half your time promoting. Share. I want to say sharing, not promoting. Yes. Let's, let's yeah. be a bit more mutual and, and reciprocal yeah. in intent, but um, yeah. that's a, a lot of time. I mean, it is. Given how long it takes me to edit, uh, what, what should we be doing with that 50% or 80% to really yeah. Value. Well, it doesn't have to be drudgery. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about making audiograms for hours on end. I'm talking about like um, sharing the gems that are in it, whether it be quotes or uh, thoughts on making it or thoughts afterwards on what you've learned from that episode. It can be uh, it can be just like a really quick video again on your phone of like reflecting on the, the biggest takeaways from the the episode right. and then linking over to it. Um, it can be like swaps with other podcasters that are doing similar shows. You could do feed swaps where you share each other's episodes. You could do promo okay. swaps where you share yeah. your trailers with each other on your different episodes. You could do a lot of things that are very community connectivity that are much more fun than just sitting down and making assets and getting those out on the socials in an impersonal way. So you don't okay. have to. You don't have to do the boring stuff. You can make the promotional or the, the sharing stuff fun and community driven. Okay. That's really, really helpful actually, because you've given me some ideas that I didn't already have. Um, so I'm extremely Oh, if you want to have some fun, that. Lauren Passell in her, I always get the name wrong. I think it's podcasting magic newsletter. If you, if you Google Lauren Passell, a hundred marketing tips. She literally has this one issue of her newsletter. That's a hundred marketing tips for podcasters. Wow. And it's, they're all incredibly quick, practical tips. Yeah. They're so amazing. That should keep you going for, for a while. For a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously yeah. out of a hundred, they're not going to land, but you're going to come across a few in there that you just think, wow, yes, that's a total Absolutely. for me. I, I'm going to do that. And when you find something that works, do it again in like a month or two. Brilliant. Repeat the things that work because that's what's hitting a chord with people. It's consistency again, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. getting it out at the same time every Friday or, or whatever. That you just need to, mm -hmm. people know what to expect from you. And that feeds through to your brand values as a freelancer, mm -hmm. hopefully that you're consistent and reliable. Uh, you're not, you're a safe pair of hands and not full of surprises, even though you're a creative genius. So <laughs> I love that. A safe pair of hands. I love that. <laughs> well, it's that's what what we all want from the people that we hire, don't we? Yeah. Now, I'd like to know a little bit more about the people that hire you, Steph, because as well as inspiring people like me to make a success of their uh, podcast, I know you do a lot of the nitty gritty stuff as well, and you can help people with editing and things like that. So please tell listeners if they've they've got they've listened this far, nearly half an hour, and they're thinking, oh, maybe maybe it's time I do my <laughs> podcast. What can you do for them? Oh gosh, well. I like to take a holistic approach. I like to offer to grow their podcast by making it better, stronger, sound better, content tighter, constantly throwing them ideas on how they can organically promote mm -hmm. and connect with others. Like I said, in a very community sharing uh, podcast growing way. So I, I do some like producer feedback on the episodes that I edit for them. I do the edit, the content and audio editing. I do the show notes, titles, that kind of thing. Put it up on YouTube, obviously. And then when I see opportunities that connect to their podcast, I also include that. It's a very right. bespoke service because I'm obsessed with yeah. podcast newsletters. So when I see something that connects to my client, I'm emailing it to them. I'm like, this is, this is something you need to do now. 
Now, Fantastic. how do you go? Here you go. <laughs> so it's not just editing in a box and here's your MP3. It's a whole service of really identifying your strengths and niche down on that audience of solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's because business people, fantastic. like you said, they don't have a lot of time to do, yeah. you know, to keep up with all of that, but I'm, and I'm doing it already. So fantastic. Yeah. Because <laughs> even just staying up with all of the changes coming from mm -hmm. YouTube and everywhere else is a full-time job. And I think also remembering to market what we do to mm -hmm. as much as we love making content trying to make something actionable out of it. Yes. And I, I wanted to wrap up with the fact that I know you're brilliant at this end bit, which I often love. <laughs> I, I love making podcasts and I get to the so end kind. And I thank the guest and I say <laughs> goodbye and see you in two weeks time. And you put something in a newsletter recently about very explicit calls to action and telling people what you want them to do when they finish <laughs> listening to your podcast. So for anybody who's still with us after half an hour, um, Steph, take it away. What should they do next? Oh my gosh. Okay. So they should screenshot, because they're probably listening to this from their phone. They should uh -huh. screenshot this episode and put it on the socials and encourage the people following you to follow Maya's podcast. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, that's just one simple thing you can literally do with a click right, right. now. Yeah. When you're super listening. easy. You don't even have to put a link to the episode. People that listen to podcasts know how to take the name and input it yeah. in and search. They're good. They'll find us. They'll find, they'll mm -hmm. find me because I'm the only one with my name. So exactly. There you go. <laughs> I'll show up. Well, if you do nothing else, nobody's asking you to read or rate or, or do anything complicated. No. Just a click for a screenshot. screenshot. You can mm -hmm. do that on your phone. Even my dad can do that on his phone. <laughs> it's so easy. And everybody can do it. You don't have to be yes. on an Apple or an Android. Everybody can do it. Brilliant. Well, on that note, Steph, we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to put all your links in as those those thank nice you. background call to actions. But uh, <laughs> for now, I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've shared with us on The Future is Freelance. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Maya. I really appreciate you so much.